Welcome back to the Blog Boy Roundtable, presented by the Bay Area Examiner. I'm Seth Varnador of the Bay Area Examiner, joined also from the Bay Area Examiner by Nathan Bond and of DraftKings Network, Nick Simon. No Robert Stieg or Anthony Vito this week, uh, but they did send in their picks, and uh, we've got a championship week coming here. Um, any surprises? I mean, I, I mean, looking back at last week, um, we picked the Oregon, Oregon state game, picked the Ohio state, Michigan, picked Florida, Florida state. We've got three of those teams playing again this week. Anybody kind of surprise you coming into this championship weekend? I'm like looking up and down. Um, well, we were just talking about the weirdness that it was, that is the, uh, mountain West situation in their championship game having to be decided by computers on Sunday morning, that's, that's, that's pretty weird. And I think you're going to, because as like all these conferences eliminate divisions, basically like it's great that you're going to get the best two teams, but it's also a downside that you're going to kind of run into these problems over the next few years because these conferences have ballooned up. Not everyone can play each other and it, it's going to be a mess in some situations. Yeah, and it's it's kind of interesting that uh, I think the other kind of interesting note here beforehand is um, Alabama just about losing last week to Auburn, <laughs> uh, uh, and that 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 we'll get to that game, but that was um, the Alabama Auburn ending was unbelievable. Were you guys Four able to watch million. that one live? Yeah, there was no reason why. Auburn should have lost that game. Russian yeah. too. It's tough. They, they put a spy on him on fourth and goal in the 31. Uh, uh, that's one of those ones you just maybe might have overthought that one a little bit there. Um, so, yeah. Hell, and, of, hell of a throw. Hell of a throw. Did him. you guys see the name of the play? Grave oh. Digger. <laughs> I believe is the name of the play. So that's pretty good. <laughs> that won't work. That one works, right? All right. So uh, against my better judgment, Nathan Bond has convinced me that we need to pick every single one of these ten games in Championship Week. Um, so we're going to. We'll start. Yeah, we'll go in sequential order here. Uh, we'll do a little bit on each game. Some maybe more than others. I would imagine some <laughs> a lot more than others, but. Uh, we'll start with Conference USA. You got New Mexico State uh, a couple weeks after beating Auburn, more convincingly than Alabama did, on the road at Liberty. This is at Liberty. This is not a neutral site game. Liberty is a 10-point favorite. The total is at 55 and a half. Nathan, where are you leaning in this one? I'm taking Liberty. Um, for They've got a really good quarterback. Uh or averaging over 10 yards an attempt, 29 touchdowns, five interceptions. Uh, I like what Jamie Chadwell's done in year one. Um, and it's, it's fun. I like, I like you, Jamie do not, not a fan of Liberty, but, uh, Jamie Chadwell would have been a pretty cool hire. Uh, he was, uh, definitely in the mix for USF, uh, last year. Um, but I think it's worked out for both parties, uh, pretty extraordinarily, but Liberty. Yeah, Nick, where are you leaning in this one? Any any love for the fight in Jerry Kills? Yeah, I, I think Liberty will win, but I have New Mexico State covering a 10-point spread here. Um, let's see. This game was close-ish at the beginning of the season. Yeah, they played each other at the beginning of the season. Liberty won that game 33-17. to Obviously, like, they've gone on and had an incredible season undefeated. Meanwhile, New Mexico State – They've been great, or they've been pretty good in ramping things up all year, all season long. Obviously, they got national spotlight by taking down Auburn. This is going to be one of the better uh, quarterback matchups of um, of the entire weekend. Two of the best quarterbacks with Caden Salt in the group of five with Caden Salter at Liberty and then Diego Pavia at Mexico State. 
So yeah, I have the Aggies to find Jerry Kills covering, but I ultimately think that uh, Liberty will get the job done and win. Yeah, uh, Stieg also likes New Mexico State. Uh, Vito likes Liberty, and I'm going to take Liberty as well. I think just being at home is obviously a big advantage. And then Liberty's been able, as Jamie Chadwell offenses are, really good at running the football. And that seems to be uh, New Mexico State's weakness on defense. But I, I, this very well could be a tight game. Kills a really good coach. And New Mexico State is actually, like, by a lot of the metrics, a lot better than you think. Uh, so th- this could end up being a really tight one. But I'm going to go with Liberty at home. Next game, we've got uh, Friday evening. Oregon is a nine-and-a-half point favorite against Washington. The total is at 66-and-a-half. Uh, Vito likes Washington. Stieg likes Oregon. Uh, I think I'm going to take the under here, 66 and a half. I've, I do think Oregon can present some problems for Washington. If I had to pick a side, I probably would pick Oregon to cover it. Seems like Penix could could be something wrong with him. That, that's kind of the, the rumor going around that maybe he's, you know, they said he was sick after the last game, but he's been kind of off the last few weeks. Uh, so, Without with that kind of a little bit of safety from the back door cover here, I'll take the under 66 and a half. Uh, because I think Oregon, if you win, you're in, you don't really need style points, right? And the last game was pretty tight, even though it was in Washington. Uh, Nick, where are you leaning in this one? I have Washington covering, but I have Oregon ultimately winning this game. Um, since they've played that classic back in October, Oregon has definitely looked like the better team. They've just been obliterating everyone on their schedule left and right. Like, Bo Nix has been unbelievable. Bucky Irving has been unbelievable. Um, meanwhile, Washington, um, <laughs> depending, it depends on how you look at it because they've had a lot of one-score games and a lot of close calls. So you can say that they're kind of underachieving, but you can also, like, flip that and say that they're finding ways to win. They certainly found ways – found a way to hold off Oregon State a couple of weeks ago. They found a way to make the right plays in the Apple Cup last week. So I, I think that they'll be able to get this close, by, the, keep it close by, again, similar to what I said with the conference USA title game, I think Oregon will still be able to overcome and win in Las Vegas. Nathan, where are you headed? We've got a couple Washingtons, one Oregon, and an under. Are you playing a side or are you playing the total here? So I'm I'm kind of torn, kind of looking at Oregon. Like, in, Nick, you, I think you hit, hit the nail on the head. Like, it's clear Oregon's been the better team since that game. Um, Michael Penix Jr., just going off the eye test and the stats alone the last month, he's not been right. Um, but with that said, I cannot go against my Tampa boy. Like, I just can't do it. Nine and a half is a lot of points. But also looking at the Oregon schedule uh, since that uh, October game, they've only not won by nine nine or more points just once, and that was the 36-27 win versus USC. They basically annihilated everybody that they've played. Um, so it's you know I'm kind of going against logic here and reason, and I, I'm going with my heart. And uh, Michael Penix Jr. will always have a special place in my heart as a as a missed uh, opportunity for USF. So you know, win one for win one for Michael, and uh, see what we can do. But I think Oregon will still win. But nine and a half is a juicy number to to take. Yeah, it seems like a lot. That's why I kind of, I stayed away from the side just because that seems like definitely the back door would be open. Washington is a team that like if you are you know up two scores can easily come down the field and and, and make it a one score game or or get within that number. So yeah, I I, I stayed away from that one. But you know, man, we we kind of talked about it last week. If if Oregon can up cover thirteen and a half against Oregon State, you feel like they're a pretty good team. Well, they uh, more than covered that. <laughs> that was an easy cover. So uh, this will be an interesting one to kind of see. Just maybe how much trending should factor into like decision making when picking games because these are definitely seem to be trending in opposite directions. Um, let's get to the Big Twelve, Texas trying to win a middle finger Big 12 championship on the way out. They are a 14 and a half point favorite. The total is at 55 and a half. Vito likes 
over 55 and a half. Uh, I'm going to ride with Stieg here. I like Texas. We saw they came in, what, they come in six tonight in the in the CFP? So they've got to kind of, if they can get style points, they probably need to get style points. Um, so I'm going to go with Texas. I think they're going to try to blow out Oklahoma State. And then also the, the kind of dual uh, kind of fun of also blowing somebody out on your way out of the conference. I think would be uh, enjoyable for them as well. So I'm going to go with Texas to cover that big number. Nathan, where are you going? So all of your points are valid and uh, any reasonable person would agree with you. However, much like Ohio state, much like Penn state, I got to see it before I believe that you are actually like quote unquote back. Um, I believe Texas can, but 14 and a half points is a very juicy number for me. That's like, that's a lot of points. And it is. In, in a game where, you know, Oklahoma State's been pretty up and down, but they've had an overall good season. Um, I, ah, man, I just, that's just a lot of points. And I got to see it from Texas. And I'll be perfectly fine if I miss this one because I do enjoy when Texas is good. It's like Alabama's a villain. Texas is also a villain when they're really rolling. So it'd be nice to kind of get them back uh, as they enter the SEC. Yeah. What, what I think what's interesting is that uh, Oklahoma State's running back. Isn't it? Didn't he, isn't he up for Doak Walker? Yeah. Ollie Gordon. Yeah. But when you look at I kind gotta, of, I got to put my vote in. I got to remember to do that. There you go. When you look at their rushing yeah. numbers, they're not great. They're like 89th in the country in rushing success rate. So it may be just a lot of accumulation for him. But Texas's defense is pretty good. Uh, Nick, where do you lean in this one? Yeah, I'm leaning towards the – I'm actually leaning towards the under here, under 55 and a half. Um, it's 55 and a half? Yep. Yeah, 55 and a half. Yep. Um, yeah, I just because I, I don't – like you just mentioned, like Ollie Gordon the second has been great for Oklahoma State. He's been the engine for this team like the last couple of months. But this Oklahoma State team is weird. <laughs> it's weird, man. They went to Orlando and just absolutely laid an egg. Um, then last week they should have lost that game against BYU. <laughs> BYU. They were on upset alert, and it was looking like they were just going to hand this spot to their rival Oklahoma. And then they were able to pull it together. I think this Texas team just, like you mentioned, like this Texas defense is pretty good. And I think they just swarm uh, Gordon and that offense for the entire game. So I just think that the under is going to hit Texas wins. And then we'll see how the playoff shapes out for them, whether or not they're going to be in the final four. Like Alan Bowman is a terrible quarterback. Can we just kind of agree on that? Like he is so ass. He's so bad. What, I tell you what, he's, been, he's gotten worse, and I don't understand. You've been in college for nine years. How how are you this bad still? Yeah, time to get a job, brother. Uh, it's you know the the thing that gives me some some reticence with Oklahoma State is like go back to three weeks or whatever it was when they just went you know and got blown out by UCF on the road. Like it was not even close, and that's not a great UCF team. I, I would say Texas is better on both sides of the ball by quite a good margin. So those are, and that was a little bit of a letdown game after beating Oklahoma, but um, I don't know. It gave up 30 points to Houston. Almost lost to BYU like Nick said last week. Uh, I don't know. All right, let's move on since we are picking all 10 of these. Uh, we're going now to some action, some noon action in Detroit, I believe. You got Miami of Ohio. Versus Toledo. Toledo is a seven and a half point favorite. Over under is at 44. Vito and Stieg both like Toledo. Nick, where are you going to this one? I like uh, Miami, Ohio to cover the seven and a half point spread here. Um, Toledo won their first matchup uh, 21 to 17. It was one of the marquee games of the MAC. I remember like both teams were undefeated heading in at the top of their divisions heading into that matchup and it ended up being really close. Um Miami Ohio is 9 and 3 against the spread this year 
And so I think that they keep this one close. They've been playing well even after uh, Brett Gabbard went down for the season with his injury. So, yeah, close game, Miami of Ohio covers. Nathan, where are you going? Are you going with the favorite here? Or? Yeah, I'm going with the favorite. I think Jason Candle's kind of faded it out after – a pretty poor like middle stretch of his tenure at Toledo and he's been there for quite a while um and maybe it's interesting or uh maybe the Sean Lewis of it all where you know you can be a head coach in the MAC but you're not going to get picked up for a bigger job so maybe he's auditioning for an OC job that staff's been together for quite a while you know former plant uh head coach Robert Wiener still there this is year four for him as co-OC uh, for the Rockets 11 and 1, they only lost to Illinois. They've rattled off 11 straight. They are the, the standard bearer in the MAC over the last couple of years, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Yeah, this is going to be a little gross, but I think I'm going to take the under in this game. Uh, Miami, Ohio, I think very well could cover, but their offense is so bad, like by the metrics, that it gives me a little hesitancy um this is the last game they played Nick says 21 17 that was with Miami Ohio starting quarterback uh but I think both teams have pretty good defenses so I'll go under 44 and it's a matching game so I'm sure I'm gonna reg- regret that but now we move out to the computer bowl in Las Vegas you got Boise State is a two and a half point favorite at UNLV I think uh this is always this is not a neutral site conference right they play at the home yeah, so it'll be at the uh, Raider Stadium, Legion. Yeah, which would be interesting because the Pac-12 title game is the night before. Okay. So that, that's kind of weird. Yeah, so that'll be. I wonder if that'll have any effect on the field. Uh, probably not. But sometimes there's like, uh, where is it, Glendale? The turf is really terrible out there. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to watch that side of it. But Boise State's a two and a half point favorite. The total is at fifty eight and a half. Um, you know, I'm. Me, Vito, and Steve are all riding with UNLV. Um, I think metrically, Boise State might be a better team, but it just, you know, UNLV it seems to be a team of destiny. Um, they've got a really good offense. They're playing at home. I'd imagine they'll be up for the game. Uh, so I'm going to go with UNLV. Nate, where are you going in this one? I'm going to take Boise State because it's really funny that the interim head coach is now coaching the <laughs> conference title game. Uh, I'm here for the laughs. Um, I think it'd be really funny for Boise to win. Um, and they get a fresh start, and uh, you know maybe they keep Danielson as the the head coach. You know, hey man, I took you guys to a bowl game. I mean, what the, and, and won a conference title. What else do you want from me? Um, so I think that that'd be the funnier part. Yeah, they seem to be. Uh, they seem to really have hated their last coach. It's, it certainly seems like. Uh, and uh, it'll be interesting. Boise State's all right passing the ball. You know, they're really bad against the pass. So uh, that seems to be a big matchup concern. Nick, does uh, that concern you at all, or, or where, where are you heading this game? I'm with every. I'm with everyone else. I'm going to take UNLV just. Just for the fact, like they're at you know at home and in conference championship game, there's a lot of state there's uh, stakes, high stakes at play here. And plus, you're again you're playing an interim head coach in a conference championship game, and I just I trust I trust the home team more in this situation more than anything like that. Like I said a couple of weeks ago, even though they lost last week, Barry Odom's done yeoman's work. You know, basically taking that program from they were five and seven last year under Marcus Arroyo, and then even worse before that, and then takes this roster to a conference championship game in year one. That's insane. So I think that they'll finish the job, cover, win, go off to whatever bowl. Um, the like the I think the uh, Mountain West champion goes to like the LA Jimmy Kimmel Bowl or something like that. So yeah, give me UNLV. And you know, Brendan Marion Gronk Bowl this year. Is it the Gronk Bowl? Really? Yeah. <laughs> but, well, uh, and Brendan Marion was uh, allegedly a candidate for Arkansas, but uh, we saw today they decided to go <laughs> with, with Bobby Petrina. So, Bring him home. Yeah. Could you imagine? Like we, this that, it is interesting. Kind of, we talked previously about the sliding doors effect of 
Petrino not he was originally the UNLV coordinator, went to Texas A and M. Brennan Marion comes in, and then looks like he may get the Arkansas job. Petrino comes and swoops in. If we go back into an alternate timeline, how would Petrino have done in Las Vegas? We think not on the field. I'm just in, just his personal his personal <laughs> life. Would he have, would he have made it? Would he have gotten into several motorcycle accidents? Uh. <laughs> he would have he would have been coming into this game like the Michelin Man. It wouldn't have just been the neck brace. It would have just been like a full body <laughs> cast. Does he does he still ride motorcycle? I mean, you can't. I mean, if you're a motorcycle enthusiast, you can't stop even yeah. after that embarrassment. So, oh man, that would have been a mess. I just picture Bobby Petrino in a full body cast, calling plays from the box like uh, Hugh Freeze was <laughs> in the hospital bed a few years ago. So, all right, <laughs> we go from uh, the computer bowl to uh, the SEC championship. Ever heard of it? Never. Usually uh, the game of the weekend, probably not this year. Uh, I'd probably go to Oregon State, Washington, I guess, but this one's pretty close. Uh, Georgia is a five and a half point favorite against Alabama. The total is at 54 and a half. Vito likes the under. Stieg likes the dogs. Nathan, what do you like in the SEC championship? I like Georgia. Uh, and Alabama, uh, not great, even when they've kind of righted the ship. And Georgia is just kind of on a different plane of existence right now. And with Brock Bowers back, the offense looks really, really good again. Uh, so God bless. Good luck. Uh, dogs by 10. Nick, is this a, like, don't think too hard? George is under a touchdown here, or is this some, one of those ones where they're trying to tell you something with this line? Hey, man, I have I think I've boomeranged back around full circle with Alabama. I'm I'm going with the Crimson Tide here. Ooh. <laughs> there is just – okay, we can do this, that this is like probably outside of his first year. This is probably like the weakest Nick Saban team – like he's had, or one at least one of the weakest. But yet they're eleven and one, man. Like they, this team, like you saw last week, this team just continues to find ways to win. Like this was okay. Like the S, the rest of the SEC West should be ashamed of themselves. They should be ashamed of themselves because if there was any year for an LSU, a Texas A and M, an Ole Miss to get to get this Alabama team. It was this year and it all failed. There's, there's, I I don't know, man. There's just something that's voodoo about this Alabama team with Jalen Milrow and like all of these non NFL wide receivers that are still, that are still making it happen, man. And even though Georgia is the death machine, I, I, I think statement gets gets him, which that would be the funniest thing. That would be very funny. That would be re- very funny, and I'm going with the funny, like a funny outcome here. Give me the Crimson Tide, Roll Tide. They somehow get into the playoff after it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm. You almost convinced me, but I'm going to go. There is a little team of destiny thing going on here, uh, but yeah, I'm going to go with Georgia. I just, you know. Listen, if anything happens to Milro, this thing is all right. we've seen we've seen that movie. All right. Against what ended up being one of the worst defenses in the country, could barely muster two touchdowns. So um yeah, I'm gonna take Georgia. I just I just see it more more ways for that to happen than Alabama, but like this line's not moving very much. So somebody knows something, right? All right, now we get to our Conference mates here in the American. You've got SMU at Tulane. Tulane is a four-point favorite at home. SMU's quarterback, Preston Stone. Leg did not live up to his last name. Broke last week. Uh, So now we've got uh, the total at 47 here. The game, this is another one where they play on campus. So it is at Tulane. These two teams played last year. SMU turned the ball over five times and Tulane smacked them. Uh, Vito and Stieg like Tulane. Nick, is yeah. this one that's we talked to Georgia? Is that too? Is this one too easy here? Yeah, this one's too easy. Uh, it's it's Tulane. Like, I mean, sh- I mean, big props to SMU for putting 
this season together, but Preston Stone, like, injuring his leg the week before is just absolutely brutal for them. I don't see any possible way they win this game with a backup, especially when you're going up against an experienced quarterback like Michael Pratt at home, like, with Tulane at home, and that's a pretty good, like, for these types of games, like, Yulman can get – can get jumping. We saw it last in last year's uh, AAC title game. Um, we've been saying like Tulane's been kind of sleepy, but they they kind of put it on UTSA last week. Like that was uh, like they they won that game pretty handily. Um, so yeah, I think Tulane handles their business here, and then they're off to their second straight uh, New Year's Six game. I think they'll probably go to the Peach Bowl this time or something like that. Yeah, the UTSA game was kind of a weird one because didn't UTSA turn the ball over like five times? Yeah. Or something like It was kind of a – and that's what happened last year when Tulane played SMU. Um, I don't know. Tulane has just been screwing around so much this year. If Stone was available, I'd probably be picking SMU. Uh, but he's not available. I think we're going to get a low-scoring game because SMU does have a really good defense. Uh, so I'm actually going to go under 47 here. Nathan – Am I an idiot? Should I just be taking Tulane and just quit screwing around? I mean, it would make sense, right? (laughs) Uh, I feel like the last couple of months, maybe the last five or six games for Tulane heading into last week, we were kind of always questioning, like, why are they dicking around with these bad teams? And then I believe it was Alex Kirshner on Split Zone Duo. He said he was talking to someone kind of around the program saying – yeah, they've been kind of holding stuff back, being pretty vanilla offensively, defensively, leading up to that UTSA game. And, well, they turned it on. And they handedly smoked UTSA. I think they're in the mode of, okay, we're we're just going to unleash it all now. And God bless your soul if you're in front of it. Um, Preston Stone being out is a tough Tough thing to see uh, because he lit up Navy in the first, like, 25 minutes of that game last week before he got hurt. Uh, He was having a really good season for SMU. feel terrible about it, uh, but it's Tulane minus four. Um, Kevin Jennings, who's going to be the back, who's going to be the starter for SMU two years ago, was a high school state champion uh, in the state of Texas, threw 39 touchdowns, three interceptions. So there's some pedigree. Wasn't a highly rated recruit, but – He's still a pretty good recruit, and you, Rhett, Rhett Lashley's pretty good at getting the most out of his quarterbacks anyway, but I think Tulane's defense is going to be just a little too powerful. Yeah, what gives me pause about Tulane is if you go back and look at the UTSA game last week, they weren't great on offense, and that's we saw the UTSA defense the week before. They're not great. They're okay. I think SMU defense is a lot better, uh, but I can't trust the backup to go and beat Tulane and that coaching staff, so – that's why I'm leaning under. So now we've got we've got the Sun Belt up next, right? App State at Troy. Troy is at home, is a six point favorite. The total is 52 and a half. Uh, Vito, Stieg, and myself are all rolling with Troy. Nathan, are you also rolling with the home team? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, never, never go against the Troy defense. Nick, are you going to make it a clean sweep for Troy? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys on Troy, but I'm going to take the under, um, under 52 and a half. Troy's defense has been fantastic. We, I mean, I mean, the, the country carousel is still spinning, but I mean, we heard some stuff with John Summerall maybe being linked to, uh, I think, I think Mississippi state was looking at him. A couple other schools were if Stoop, if Stoops left, he probably would have been the guy at Kentucky too. Yeah, he'll he'll be an SEC head coach with either either this cycle or by the end of next cycle he'll have an SEC job. Um, Troy's defense ranked twentieth in SP plus, so I think they'll they'll just totally drag drag uh, App State down into the dirt. So I, I'm going to go with the under here. All right, I think that's I think it's a good play as well. Um, all right, let's move on to the ACC championship game. Florida State, we saw them beat Florida last week, pull away late to cover. Uh, they didn't look great doing it, though. That was not a pretty game. I've, it's been referred to as a Big Ten West game. 
Uh, Louisville, on the other hand, uh, did blow it against their rival, lost to Kentucky. Florida State is a two and a half point favorite. The total sits at 48 and a half. Vito likes the over. And Stieg and I both like Louisville. If you go back and look at the Louisville game, they turned the ball over in some bad spots and also gave up a kick return touchdown. Uh, that's a game I don't think they lose very often. If if you play it 10 times, they don't lose it as <laughs> very many times, but they lost it last week. So maybe I think I feel like I'm getting them kind of undervalued. Florida State looked terrible for most of the game against a really bad Florida. Like the Florida defense is basically the USF defense statistically. They're pretty much the same. <laughs> like the, the stats are startlingly close. Uh, and that Florida State offense struggled to move the ball against them. Uh, so I'll take the underdog. And I guess Stieg is of a similar mind. He's taking Louisville as well. Nick, where are you going on this one? I, I don't know, man. I still trust this Florida State team. I still trust this. I still trust this Florida State team and their um, athletes to get it done. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be probably similar to um, it's probably going to be similar to uh, the Florida game where they're going to struggle at times a little bit, but then still going to find ways to get it done. I think like I mean they're right there. Like this is the finish line. They're, they were ranked number four in the rankings that just came out about an hour ago. So you win this game. You're in, and I think that's enough motivation for them to get across the finish line. So I have Florida State covering, winning, very close game, but definitely covering the two and a half point spread. This is a weird one because it was it moved through three. I guess it was on the other side of three. That would have been much nicer uh, to get, to get three than two and a half because, like you said, this Florida State team, man, they seem to just find a way this year. There was a, a stat that somebody put out, like kind of looking at post game win expectancies and who's kind of overachieved by the most. And Florida State was like a a nine-and-a-half win team based on post-game win expectancies. But like Clemson, they found a way to come up with a turnover late and get the game to overtime. You know, Florida last week, they found found a way to get just kind of shut Florida down on defense and move the ball enough. They are a tough team here. Nathan, are you going with Florida State? Do you believe in that kind of ability to finish? Yeah, I think – I really enjoy watching this Florida State team. I, you know, last week, um, you know, the first week with Tay Rodemaker as the starting quarterback definitely looked ugly. Uh, Trey Benson still looked really good. Uh, that touchdown uh, run to basically ice the game was fantastic. Um, there's the Mike Norvell of it all. He's been really close to lemon booting some of these games, and he hasn't quite yet. Um, this is a prime opportunity in a conference championship game where we all know Mike Nor- Narkvell loves to choke away conference titles, uh, historically speaking. Um, so I don't feel great about my Florida State pick, but I'm I'm riding with them. Uh, you know, finish finish for Jordan. You know, finish for Travis. Uh, it's that's. I just I'm not a big fan of Jack Plummer. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know it's why. Not great. <laughs> I, I, I just I he's kind of up and down. I'm just not a fan. I think if it was a maybe any diff, any other quarterback other than Jack Plummer, I'd probably pick Louisville here. But I'm going to ride with Florida State. Yeah, their perform their offensive performance against Florida's defense kind of scared me off them because that is a bad Florida defense. Louisville is much better defensively than Florida is. So, but. They've got some dudes. If they just if they decide, you know what, we're just going to throw the ball up to Keon Coleman ten times, like no matter what, that might be enough to work. <laughs> that might be enough. So uh, sometimes coaches can overthink things. Um, the last game we've got here, Michigan, big winners over Ohio State. Let's can we talk about that game real quick? Absolutely. I think Ohio State was better. Down to down. They just didn't come up with the plays at the end. Ryan Day played not to lose. He he didn't he, he didn't did. play and he played not to That's lose. That's true. Yeah, Sharon Moore was I was awesome in decision making and aggressive. And that seemed to be the difference, right? Because like I, I forgot who uh mentioned it on Twitter earlier, like in the last couple of days. Michigan's longest passing play was the um the uh trick play with Donovan Edwards. Where like McCarthy like threw it back to him and he complete and then he completed the pass. Um, 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like Ohio State was right there, but the difference is coach. Like the difference was coaching and you getting out coached by uh, by an interim, a substitute teacher. That's not great. <laughs> there's and there's valid reasons why Ohio State fans are at his neck. Yeah, it was it was a super easy search today to find Ryan Day buyout. Like Columbus Dispatch <laughs> had it posted on it. Like there, it's it's turning. I, I said last week that was the first step towards Ryan Day, uh, head coach of Florida, come, coming true next year. Uh, so um, yeah, like not going for it on fourth down, fourth and ones when you've got like you've got an unbelievable back, you've got a decent front, you've got animals at receiver, you could just flip it out to like. And then Michigan going for and fourth down multiple times, converting, turn those into points. Uh, the, it was kind of the the separation in the game. Michigan has a couple guys that got injured in that game, but luckily for them, they're playing Iowa in the Big Ten championship <laughs> game. Michigan is a twenty three point favorite. I uh, the total is thirty five and a half. Like, what's the implied score there? I'm like <laughs> 29 to six, right? Like, like 29 to six is like the implied <laughs> score. So Iowa team total under a touchdown, probably 32 uh, to three. <laughs> that's a cover. So Vito actually thinks that's too few points. He's going over 35 and a half. Stieg is taking Iowa to cover. Oh, I guess the question is how many points does Michigan need to cover this? How many points does Michigan need to score to cover this? Six. <laughs> just, just, just cut to cover 23. Just How many points? 30? Just score 27. Like 20, 20, 20, 20, 24. 24. <laughs> All right. So where, where are you guys leaning on this? So because it's you've got the – obviously Michigan – I you could say they're still fighting for that first – that number one spot with Georgia. Um, and if Georgia loses, they're fighting uh, to kind of maintain that. Um, and Harbaugh's first game back after three weeks off, like, is he going to be in total psycho mode trying to run this thing up? Or is he just going to do, you know, it's they've got it locked up 24 to three. They're happy with that. Michigan has like just absolute insane psychopath energy right now right now like buddy this the wagons are circled in ann arbor um yeah this it, it, this is just no question like michigan michigan could cover the total by themselves um iowa is just an absolute abomination it, it, did any of you did any of you guys watch that nebraska game last friday just let me, let me tell you nick did i watch it I watched the whole thing. The first <laughs> Iowa game I've watched all year. I picked Iowa Nebraska over 26 and a half. It was 10 to 10. <laughs> Iowa had already had a field goal blocked. Is in the in the in, inside the 10 yard line, third and goal. Perfect throw to the receiver. Instead of catching it like a human, tries to catch it with his <laughs> armpit. It bounces off his chest. There's the cover right there, but that's all right. At least he'll get points out of the drive. They get a second field goal blocked. And then they go on, and then they they trade interceptions at the end of the game, and (laughs) Iowa (laughs) kicks the field goal to make sure it doesn't go to overtime so it can't go over. Uh, Yeah, that was brutal. Uh, So I am uh, maybe lashing out here, but I'm taking Michigan to cover the 23. (laughs) I don't think Iowa Iowa can score 10 in this game. And I think so if you're having some big, you're having some big feelings right now. I'm going to need you to simmer down. I, I, um, it, I'm more upset that I had to watch the whole game. <laughs> and just when, hey man, when it got when Nebraska hit an explosive play for a touchdown, I'm like, this thing's covering. There's no way they can't score seven more points in the next 40 minutes. <laughs> they scored three. So yeah, I'm taking Michigan. I, where do where do you got? Is there any? The total freaks me out because I think Michigan could get there by themselves. Like I, you would think Iowa under, I think Michigan could get to thirty six by themselves. So it's Michigan, you like, Michigan, it, right. all day, all day. Mm-hmm. This is the most confident in any of these picks that I am. Uh, maybe outside of Tulane, which I am going to hammer bet uh, once we get off this call. Um, I smell the parlay coming. Don't tell Colin. 
<laughs> uh, it's so bad. There, I was so bad. Uh, gross. Their quarterback won a game where they he, I think he completed like thirty eight percent of his passes. Like, uh, miss me with that. I wrote last week about after that abomination. I just straight up wrote like. Man, Michigan Ohio State should just straight up be the Big Ten championship game. Like, let's, like just stop waste. Like, don't waste our time in Indianapolis with this garbage. Like, come on. Like, I don't care that Iowa won ten games in like one of the crappiest divisions of ever. Like, get out of here with that. Michigan all day. Yeah. So, so I somebody went and looked at like Iowa's offensive profile. And kind of going back through history and see what is like the largest win total with that offensive profile. And I think it was four. <laughs> like the last team that had a similar offensive profile, the most wins was four. So yeah, I'm I'm with the Michigan here. I appreciate you guys standing in solidarity for them having to watch <laughs> that Iowa game last week. But all right, those are 10 games. We picked every conference championship game. Uh, I was 10 games over 500 coming in the week. So the worst I can be is 500 after so that's not too bad, but uh, this is basically, so going through real quick, we'll go through kind of the season records. It's all, everybody's within striking. I'm at 31 and 21 Vito and Vito's at 29 and 23. Steve's at 29 and 22, just kind of a quirk of one of his games pushing Nathan's at 27 and 25 Nick's at 24 and 27. So, this whole thing could kind of flip here. So we'll be back next week, I guess, to kind of talk through this and talk through army Navy next week, and then go through the, our preseason picks. And uh, we'll kind of start it, figuring it, out real what, quick. I wanted record, to ask really. you, Seth, um, yeah. my Navy under pick, what was it? Let's was go it under five and Navy a half? under six and a half. <sighs> Cashed. <laughs> Yes, we cashed it. We actually did pretty good on the under. It was regular season, right? Bowl games didn't don't count. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, cashed cashed. Let's yeah. go. Cashed your, it. Your your boy here took Tennessee under nine and a half. <laughs> uh, we're, we won't talk about the overs though. That's that was a little. It looks like we all did actually pretty good on the unders. The overs was a little bit tougher for us. But. Florida, man. Ugh. The worst. That, that Arkansas game is really sticking in my crawl. Don't worry. I, I think I did have the worst pick. Uh, and we'll talk about it next. <laughs> the worst pick out of everybody when it comes to some of our preseason picks. So that'll be fun. We'll talk about that <laughs> next week. We'll review these championship games. We'll be talking about the playoff. And um, we might even know USF's bowl destination by next week. So that Yeah, maybe, we'll know next Sunday. Then that'll, that'll sneak in as well. So. We'll be back next week to talk all that, preview maybe a little bit of bowl season, and review the regular season. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, help us game the YouTube algorithm.